All right, so uh, I started making videos because I was super stressed. I needed actual help, and people just kept on giving me pretty words, pretty words, pretty words. Everybody I knew that could do something wanted to give me pretty words, and the ones who couldn't, it's because they understood they're in the same position. When a lot of people could have done something and made a difference, they watched. Or they gave their word and didn't keep it. There are people who kept their word, though. <laughs> complete strangers came to help me. There were also complete strangers that were out to hurt me, out to harm me. Alyssa came to see me in the jail. She was the only person to do so. Um, her mom, Mandy, and her little sister, they came to see me in person. That was really important. I mean, the fact that I got to see them in person and meet them in person. really made a difference. I have really bad nightmares about the things that I've gone through. About, well, quite a bit. So I, I found out that Matt died. Christine told me that. She, uh, She was going to help, but then she got into housing and got back into her drug habits. A lot of people, they, uh, they did some pretty messed up stuff. So I'm going to let you know, when I have a really bad nightmare, um, I still see Natalie die every day. Every time I closed my eyes in that car accident. But those aren't the only nightmares that I have. And I wake up and I beg people to kill me. A lot of times I see people that I love dead in my dreams. And they're just so real, you know? I, uh... Don't get to sleep very often. And when I do, it's pretty shady spots. You know, Walmart parking lots like where I'm at now in Cheyenne. They help, you know. It's a place where I can pass out and not be harassed. <laughs> but when I get up, when I wake up from those dreams, I just want somebody to kill me. Sometimes I'm only passed out for a minute or two. And sometimes I don't even get to sleep. I just close my eyes and I try to. And I try to explain to people I can't function without a, a safe environment. But their idea of a safe environment. For somebody who's autistic, it's the same thing for people with Asperger's almost universally. I mean, the routine, having friends and family, just being able to see them. When I wake up from those dreams, I, I just want my life to over and I beg people to kill me. It's because no matter what I don't have a safe a safe place and a lot of people they can't provide it but they do the best they can to help me and then there's a lot of wing nuts 
and this week I tried to run some people off and I did a terrible job. They're still here. It wasn't that I wanted them to run away. It's that they can't help. And with me being all framed up how I have and, and prevented from functioning thing about these videos is that I, I can't function. I don't have the means to do all the things that people say you need to do it yourself. I don't have access to a printer. I don't have access to an area even big enough to go through all the paperwork that I have and I'm, I'm shut down. I mean I, I look at it and I get overwhelmed and that's just it. A lot of people wasted their money stupidly, like Dan Faber. See, he uh, had ideas about that money, about how my opinion doesn't matter because he sent me money. Alyssa did not treat me like that. Mandy did not treat me like that gentleman who sent me money this week he did not treat me like that <laughs> there's a lot of people that tried to help but their help was well exactly what I asked them not to do don't defend me on Facebook don't don't argue with people on Facebook taking screenshots is more helpful Now, after uh, begging these people to kill me, a lot of good came out of it, believe it or not. Some of the things that uh, I wanted Alyssa to come forward about, well, she typed those things at me angrily. I did this, and I did this, and I did this, and I did this, but it shows that she did those things. She did make an effort. That's something I can use. Also, that Brooke lady, she lied outright. She lied outright in a Natalie Bollinger group. Because she was angry with me for calling her out. I did call her out. I also saved the screenshot so I can prove that she lied, which is, well, that's phenomenal. That's an incredible use. My friend Anna, she shared her story about medications and what she's going through. She's going through the exact same thing with medications as me, except uh, I don't take them because of things like what she's going through. Um, because you don't want to learn and don't want to understand you don't need to try to help. Matter of fact, it's better if you didn't. Um, you can ask Shannon Alvarado. I'm a different person in person. I'm a better person in person. But you guys don't get to see that. And a lot of my friends, they forgot who I am in person because of everything that's gone on. And because I haven't been there. I wasn't there to give Ben a blanket that he froze to death. That was on Christmas, right before Natalie died. He wasn't the only one. My friend Matt just recently passed away. He froze to death as well. A lot of these people that I'm exposing, it's not that I hate them. It's that they do need help. I've had a lot of people that I knew that they finally got housing, but they're addicts, and the first thing they do is die. They have a place where now they can invite people over, or people are going to want to bring drugs over so they can stay for the night. And, uh... <clears throat> 
out of all of it, there are a lot of things that I, I did not expect. With Shannon, I kind of expected that she was going to do the talking over me thing, but not every night. I kind of expected that she was going to make it about her, and she did. But she did it every night. Shannon's different in person than she is on the internet, too. She's a lot meaner in person. When she gets drunk, she needs somebody to target. Lucky for me, it was usually Rick. Um, there's another lady I needed her to come forward to. A lot of you people, they want to tell me about money, 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 money. A little bit of money here and a little bit of money there doesn't get me a safe place. That doesn't mean I'm not appreciative of it. But I feel like shit because it doesn't do any good because without a safe place, I can't do anything except make videos and try to force myself to take screenshots and try to force myself to make phone calls a little bit at a time as time is ticking away. And I could sit down and do all of this if I had a safe environment, but I haven't had one. Also, a lot of people that, uh, really should have come forward, I called them out, too. A lot of these people that I begged to kill me when I woke up, you know, this morning I woke up that same way. That officer woke me up, and when he did that, I just couldn't get back to it reminded me that even if I try to sneak into Colorado to go somewhere and try to coordinate and plan an attack, well, that's the thing. It is an attack. Filling out reports that is an attack against the state of Colorado. I need to sue the shit out of them bastards for the things that they did, but that's the thing. Without a safe environment, I can't function to do anything but make videos. But also, as a result of me wanting to die so badly, people have shared their stories with me. And it shows that I'm not alone. I'm not the only person who goes through. There's a lot of homeless people that are going through this. Right now, I mean, I'm doing my best to stay calm. But I, I really just want to scream at the top of my lungs, please kill me, please kill me. And, uh... There's also a lot of people that did exactly uh, what I expected out of a Christian. I just didn't expect it out of these Christians. And B, I, I love her. I really do. But she's different now. She's in a lot of pain herself. That's something we have in common. She's in a lot of physical pain. I met her over 20 years ago. She has saved hundreds of lives, impacted hundreds of lives, helped out thousands of people. When I learned how to love right, it was Aunt B who taught me how to love right. The
thing is, uh, I didn't expect Aunt B to become one of those Christians. Three of my friends died in the last week. And that, that hurts me. It hurts me so much because I don't get to see them. One of them was mad at me. He hated me. Thought that I had done something to Natalie, and now he said, I had to tell him thank you for the things that he did for me. He died thinking I was somebody I'm not. He grew up in the system, same as me, and he went through a lot of the same. There's a lot of people who helped me out that understand addiction. And uh, it's because they're addicts. And there's a lot of people who understand because they used to. I'm always suicidal. Always. Ever since I left Virginia. Single moment. There was a uh, about two days there where after I left Virginia, I was just excited to get back to Boulder and to see my loved ones. And I had a vehicle now, so I could put my backpack away. Not look so much like a hobo and maybe maybe get to see some of my loved ones. I really felt like crap about how everything went down in Virginia, but I was optimistic that I'd be able to see my loved ones. Natalie and Alicia weren't the only friends I lost when I was in Virginia. I had friends who died. I had friends who showed me their true colors. Those friends who showed me their true colors after Natalie died, they did the same things that they had done while I was in Virginia. They ganged up on me and abused the shit out of me and protected each other from their own wrongdoing. But a lot of these people who are pretending to be friends, pretending to be my friends, I still love them. I still want to meet I still want to tell them that, well, it depends individually. I'd love to have coffee with Danica. She didn't keep her word, though. She didn't want her name exposed, but then again, she didn't mind uh, sending her friend Kara after me. Wait, that was Miss Shelley. A lot of people gave me excuses. A lot of excuses. It's because those people lied to me that they got exposed. Amanda is funny. She uh, was in one of them Facebook groups arguing about exposing people. <coughs> now she didn't see a problem with it, but she certainly did when she got exposed, now didn't she? She 
did exactly what I expected. Instead of history. There's a lot of people who... I'm grateful that they tried to help. But I'm pissed off at them for not trying to understand. Dan Faber's one of them. There's also a lot of people who kept information from me that could have helped me to make positive decisions, the right decisions. Like uh, Dan Faber, he knew that Layla Johnson was not who she said she was. <laughs> he should have told me that. There's also people that, like Amanda, she thought that a little white lie was okay. Except the little white lie she told me was the most fucked up thing she could have told me at the time. My first day there in Montana. She told me that Jamie was dating James again. And that fucked my head up severely. I still love Jamie. and She's a pretty fucked up individual. Layla Johnson and Karamia, they're a couple of fucking wing nuts. There's a lot of people who are threatened for trying to help me, like Aaron Cockerham. She didn't abandon me. There's other people that abandoned me that really, I understand why they did. The way that I was painted in media, with all the people getting their lives threatened, with people getting their lives threatened in Chapel, Nebraska, people being treated like shit for being my friend, it makes perfect sense why they're too afraid to come forward. But also, it's stuff that they texted me, so I have that saved. All of my resources were taken. They were taken because people did bad things to me and intentionally sent me into a panic attack and a meltdown. They knew exactly what they were doing. And had they not done so, I wouldn't have had to expose these people. I wouldn't have had to expose anyone. When I decided I was going to go after the predators, there's a reason for it. It's because these predators didn't just go after my loved ones. They went after me as well. They wouldn't step up to the plate. They wanted to hide behind others. These guys didn't want it to become a monkey and fucking pony show. They shouldn't have come after me for things I didn't do. But a lot of these people who were pretending to be my friend, well, as soon as I exposed them as liars, they changed their fucking tune. One of those ladies, that Kara Johnson lady, yeah, I called her out on her lies and her bullshit. Once she realized that I had already caught her, she changed thing is, I don't have a place to work on any of this, so I'm stuck having a non-stop panic attack, and it's bouncing back and forth between wanting to drive off a cliff, and wanting to blow my head off, and thinking about taking the lariat I got in the back, putting it around my neck, and putting a uh, weight on my uh, gas pedal. I had to depend on people with a history of abuse. And some of those people I didn't know were abusive until I met them. Shannon Alvarado, I didn't realize how abusive she was until I met her. And it was in the first week that I was there that I realized how abusive she really is and how much of an alcoholic she is. 
But also, there's a lot of people that I care about that aren't going to tell the truth. Because telling the truth requires them admitting that they're not perfect. And that they're abusive. And there's something that they need to change. Shannon needs to just stop being abusive. If she can't stop being abusive, it's not a safe environment for me because I'm shutting down. I can't do anything except make videos and beg her for help if she promised to give and promised to give, but can't stay sober long enough to actually help. And then there's Aunt B. It didn't occur to her that not keeping her word would fuck me so greatly. I had paperwork that was supposed to come in the mail. She said, send me the mail. Have it sent here. She still tells me that. I can't even go to Nebraska. I have a warrant there. That's because they wanted to cover for the police in uh, Chapel, Nebraska. They did the same thing they did in Boulder. What I did in Scott's Bluff was defend myself. They did everything that they could to try to force me into a panic attack so they could punish me for it. I broke their equipment and threatened to continue breaking their equipment. That was the same week that I got kicked out of church. I got kicked out of a nut hatch and a church in the same week. They weren't after a 72-hour hold. They were after pretending. They were after giving the police what they wanted. And although I can prove all of this, nobody's going to let me. Nobody's going to help me to make sure that that happens. All of these people in houses that fucked me over, they, uh did so intentionally. What Lana and Amanda did, they planned out. And it's a pretty messed up thing to do. With uh, a lot of the other people that screwed me over, they planned it out too. The police working together with uh, Shelly and them to try to frame me that I didn't do to prevent evidence, yeah. That kind of cover-up doesn't happen without people coordinating and working together. Then there's uh, people that I care about that, well, I'm going to make a whole new video on that. This is basically just me rambling to try to calm myself down, so... I want to die every day, but there's reasons that I want to die. It's because without people in person, anybody can victimize me, and I'm too financially unstable to be able to defend myself. People like Aunt B are going to turn a blind eye because they care about what other people think. A lot of these people care what other people think. They say you shouldn't care what other people think. Right. People kill each other over what they think. They rape people over what they think. They frame people. Gang up on them over what they think. Dan Faber made some shitty assumptions, and he punished me for them, and he felt that his punishment was justified because he gave me money. Well, fuck you, Dan. 